talk some uh, teal small parameters in the specifics. Uh, fortunately, Aaron printed out a page and a half of some of these things we're going to talk about so I can keep track of them. Uh, let's start with the top of your list. Well, we've got RE, or sometimes it's listed as REVC or DCR, and this is simply just the resistance of the voice coil. You take a voltmeter, you hook it up to the voice coil, and that's your DCR. A lot of people will ask, why is the DCR in ohms, you know, lower than the rated impedance of the speaker? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because nominal impedance and DCR are not the same. DCR is strictly just the resistance of the voice coil. Impedance takes inductance and capacitance into consideration as well. So. That's why you don't see, an, uh, for a 4-ohm sub, you don't read 4 ohms on your voltmeter. Yeah. You're reading 3.3 to 3.6 or 3.8 or somewhere along those lines. This is a good point. Uh, oftentimes people are confused. So if I have a 100-watt amplifier and I'm, I'm running a speaker that's 4 ohms, uh, why, why does the power keep changing? Why is it fluctuating? Well, because uh, you have an impedance curve. And the uh, impedance curve is what dictates what your power output is at a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. You know, when we put a speaker in a sealed enclosure, you have a big peak is your driver resonance, and that's where the impedance is the highest, and that's where your speaker moves the easiest in the application. Um, but beyond, so, so you don't have really much voltage going to the speaker. The mm -hmm. impedance is so high. But it tapers down from there. As you go up in frequency and down in frequency, your impedance lowers, mm -hmm. and, and you get more power. And this is uh, partially why I'm assuming that high-pass filters and low-pass filters are so helpful for a speaker's output. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you're limiting the bandwidth in which they play, so, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And, okay, good. So, uh, FS, what's FS, this? FS, that's the driver's resonant frequency in free air. So that's the point. I, I said it in the application, it's where the speaker moves the easiest. But in free air, which is where we measure all of our TSPs, we've got our clipple clamp back there that we clamp our woofers in, um, it's where the speaker moves its easiest. Uh, if you want something that plays really low, you probably want to find something with a lower FS. Uh, that's a pretty good rule of thumb to give you an indication of how low the speaker plays. That's not always the case, though, because we derive these measurements with small signal, mm -hmm. so not very much voltage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you can get into a stiffer portion of your suspension oh. at larger signal. So sometimes we listen to woofers where the FS is lower, but it doesn't play quite as low. Mm -hmm. And it's because that's what's happening. Okay. It gets into a stiffer sport portion of the suspension, and the FS actually increases a little bit when you move it a little bit more. You know, you're making <clears throat> me think of, uh, we buy a lot of our competitive uh, brand pr uh, products to, to sample. And there's a lot of good companies out there. And, and sometimes we'll, we'll buy a sample from something, and we'll run it through the Teal Smalls, and, and we'll be like, what? This... This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, so I, I guess what I'm getting at is there's a really fine art in balancing all these things we're talking about to get exactly what you're trying to get in a driver. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's all a balance. You change one thing, everything else changes. Mm -hmm. you, or you change one thing mechanically anyway, everything mechanically changes. You, think, you change one thing electrically, uh, everything in the electrical parameters changes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, every one little thing affects the other, and it's definitely a balancing act.